This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have a water complaint, meaning that the restaurant's complaining that they have a water leak down inside the building. So I'm walking up on the roof initially and I see water all over the ground. So we follow it over. I have a feeling we're either gonna have a plugged up drain or a broken drain pan. This carrier unit's notorious for having broken drain pans. And it doesn't look like it's broken. Oh, well, yeah, it's broken. Look at that. It's plugged up too though, because it should still be somewhat draining. But yeah. So it's very common for these things. You need to, to you have to change this drain pan because the threads get rotted out and they no longer uh, drain properly. But obviously we've got a plugged up drain too. Um, they're complaining though that they have other issues. So we can clear this thing. There you go. Nice and dirty in there. Probably put it back on for now. Get them something. There, now it's draining. See, amazing what having the P-trap on there does because it wasn't draining. But that's because this uh, this P-trap's on the negative air pressure side. So you notice that I pull the P-trap off and you see it doesn't drain. And that's because the return air is actually sucking the air through that hole because the drain pan or P-trap or drain pan I should say, is on the negative air pressure side. So we put this on, and the moment that the P-trap fills up with water, takes a second, and then it'll start to drain out because, and see there we go, we already have a trickle. Now it's not gonna be as much as it was a minute ago because it's, it's already draining out pretty good. But it has to fill up the P-trap first, which it just did, and then once it fills up the P-trap, then it can drain properly, and the trap itself has to be sized properly so that way it doesn't pull the air or pull the water through the trap. I've seen that too before, where the negative air pressure in the building will actually dry out the traps and then when they go condensating, then they don't drain. So um, we're not just gonna leave it at this as usual, big picture diagnosis. The customer's also complaining about um, an AC unit not working right here. They're saying this unit's not working and their kitchen AC is not working. So I'm gonna dive into it and see what we can figure out. Now this is the Linux unit. Um, I just went to the terminal board. There's no active error codes on here. I highly doubt this unit's down, but we're gonna obviously check it out. So we have an occupied signal, which is good. And we have a G call showing return air temp of 73 degrees, discharge air temp of 70. Now uh, the unit's not running right now, so that's probably just gonna be evaporative cooling happening because the, you know, the unit probably satisfied and there's still condensation leaking off of the evaporative coil is my guess but we will check everything out um yeah everything seems to be okay check this guy out make sure the indoor blower motor is actually running this is a vfd drive or vfd driven unit i should say looks okay damn wrist hurts so it's hard for me to turn these panels um okay well we're gonna jump into this i'm probably gonna go ahead and uh finish up on this unit we'll finish going through this unit to make sure it's working properly and if everything's good we'll clean out the drain pan and go from there so when it comes to this drain remember what I said that you know you can't expect it to drain because this has a negative air pressure uh, drain pan so you can't really expect it to drain when the unit's running now what you'll notice is when you shut off the unit you'll see water come out so I don't know if I'll see it right now or not but I'll go ahead and shut down the unit because I'm gonna check the evaporator out anyways Go ahead and power this guy down. And let's go see if we have any water coming out. Looks like just barely, not much though. Okay, but if it was plugged up or you know had a lot of condensation, then it definitely would. We're gonna go ahead and give it some sprays. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the this panel right here and clean it. Well, I'm gonna inspect it to see how dirty it is. Um, but we're gonna give it some squirts, and then I'm also gonna clean the main going downstairs too. And in order to do that, what I'm just going to do is simply tape this hose nozzle to it, turn it on, and let it run for a little while and just clear out because these things can plug up. This particular restaurant has got a, all their ACs connect underneath. So they all connect under the roof right here and then come down at one single point in the back of the kitchen. And we actually get a big complaint here 
uh, multiple times a summer where they call us and they say that it's leaking over their restroom and um, usually what happens is it'll back up into this right here because this is the lowest point so it'll back up into here and then overflow in the return go downstairs and it's just because the main gets plugged up downstairs so I'll probably end up cleaning that today just to be safe I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to get to though because I do have a thunderstorm over my head um, it doesn't look like it's gonna be big but I am hearing thunder in the background, so we'll see. I'll do what I can. So it looks like this is another AC. We got multiple drain pans that have busted threads. This one's all jacked up. But I got to take it off to blow it out anyway. So it's going to show my example of this AC is running right now. I'm going to put a little water in there. Okay, and you'll notice that it struggles. Now it, it's finally the pan's getting full. So you're getting like a, a drip drip. And I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's sucking air back through the trap. There's, there's a significant amount of water in there. And the negative air pressure is pulling the water back, okay? So the moment that I turn the AC off, all that water's gonna flood out. And I'll prove it right now. We'll walk over here. Turn it off. Let's go look at this one and look at look at all the water coming out now so that's why we have to have a p-trap on this ac there has to be this p-trap to prevent that that negative air pressure from stopping the unit from draining okay because the negative air pressure will stop that unit from draining but because i shut it off and the indoor blow motor turned off it lost that negative air pressure and then it drained got to be careful too because um I can overflow the drain pan right down into the ductwork very easily right now. So I'm just kind of giving it a few squirts. Little chunks are falling out, but nothing horrible. So I'm just going to kind of keep clearing these. So I came back. Um, I'd gotten out of here last time in a hurry because we had a thunderstorm coming over and I needed to get out of there. Came back today and I have a hunch. So just to recap, the last time that I was here, they were complaining that they had several ACs not working. We had a a leaking drain I went ahead and fixed the drain over there um, they said that the bar which is that unit directly right there in the middle and the kitchen weren't working properly but they had good TDs while I was here I did not go any further than that because I couldn't spend too much time but I noticed that when I was leaving that they have a, a severe building balance problem the building balance is very negative that got me to thinking and I had popped the lid on one of these exhaust fans and noticed the belt looked loose now if I have loose belts, that's gonna make the balance even more negative, but we need to start there. So we're gonna start with the kitchen. We're gonna make sure that all these belts are loose. I did pop the tops on them right now. They definitely run these things at a very slow speed, but I do have a few loose belts just off the, just you know from looking right away. This one right here is loose. You can tell it's loose right over there. So I'm gonna jump on these things, check the belts, tighten them up, and then we're gonna start there, and then we'll go through the ACs. Just visually, what a difference when you put a new belt on there. Put a spare in there too. I always like to put new belts and spares together, so when I can. So I've got the exhaust fans belts tightened up and they're pulling as much air as they can. Mind you, they had a company come in here a couple years back and slow down all their exhaust fans and turn off their makeup air units. That's why it says do not operate. I'm not gonna change that. That's a whole engineered thing. It's not really a great thing in my opinion, but you know. Whatever, I'm just gonna work with what we have here. So, exhaust fan belts are tight. They're pulling as much air as they can, the way that they are. Makeup air units are not running, so our makeup air comes from the ACs. Unfortunately, this economizer, and I believe this new ACs economizer are the only economizers that are working. I believe that this carrier is disconnected, this carrier is disconnected, and this one only has a minimum outside air damper. So. I'm gonna make sure that even though these ones are disconnected, we need minimum air coming through those ACs because uh, the building isn't a negative air pressure. Again, I'm not a certified balance guy. I'm just working with what I got here. So the building's in a negative air pressure and I'm trying to make it just ever so slightly positive. I probably won't be perfect, but even though these economizers aren't working, the customer's aware and they haven't wanted to fix them. I need to at least force the, the minimum outside air dampers open so we get a little bit of fresh air 
to try to help with the balance. So in that situation, we may have to take the dampers and screw them open or something like that just a little bit so that way we get some fresh air. It's one of those things, you know, economizers are most of the time, um, the payback on them in the customer's eyes isn't very uh, real. And so a lot of times they don't want to fix them, which I understand, especially like these economizers are the old style carrier, I mean, uh, Honeywell controllers, the electromechanical controllers, and they are pretty complicated. Um, if you don't understand how they work, they're just very uh, confusing, you know? So um, customers usually don't want to fix them, you know, it is what it is. You just gotta, you, we put in quotes and then they say no, so. But anyways, I need this building and a slightly positive air pressure, so I need to verify that these things are open. If they're not open, I need to manually open them just a little bit, get, you know, 10% open or something like that. So I've got this one set to, I think, 12%. This one, I need to look and see what it's set at. It might be around 10%. And then uh, I'll check that minimum outside air damper and make sure it's manually open, and then we'll check these other ones too. All right, got the balance as best as possible. It's not perfect. It's just, uh, I think it's pretty close to being slightly positive, but I'm not even using a manometer because they got customers going in and out the doors. I'm just using my hand. So again, it's just a quick adjustment. If they want to get crazy, they can call a certified company out. Um, all their ACs are working. I'm not putting my gauges on every unit. We've gone through these units in the last couple weeks, checking them out. They're all doing everything they can. The last thing I want to check is I'm going to climb into the, uh, well, lift the ceiling tiles in the kitchen and make sure that we don't have any broken ducts just to make sure that you know duct didn't fall off it's very common on these older buildings so i'm going to check that out but everything is running i have the damper set to a minimum position the ones that don't work which is this one this one and this one has a manual damper they're all set for about eh, 10 12 percent air um, this one i have set for i think 25 percent or 20 percent and then this one i have for about probably 10 12 percent too so um this is a newer unit it's a little oversized so it can handle that extra air because you got to remember when i open up that outside air damper that ac has to cool that on top of the building air too so so that's where we're at um i'm gonna go downstairs and check in the attic look for any broken ducts on that kitchen just to look at this look at how someone has connected this flex duct to these cans it seemed i found three of them that were doing this I can only imagine what the rest of them look like. I couldn't get to everything. This is the one of the supply ducts. Look at the pinch on that. So to recap on this one, we had a initial service call of two air conditioners not working. They were saying their kitchen and their bar, but then they also had a water leak from one of the ACs. So I went ahead and took care of the water leak first because basically I go into these situations and I evaluate them. Of course, I ask the manager if they have an opinion on how they want me to address these, but if they don't, I usually take them with the customer satisfaction being the number one thing, meaning that I need to fix the water leak because that's preventing customers from sitting in their dining room. Okay, the kitchen is important too, but that's the cooks and you know the customers are first, the cooks come second. Unfortunately, that's the way that restaurants look at it, okay? So went ahead and took care of the water leak issue first, okay? And I kind of explained in the video a little bit about the negative air pressure trap and why it's important uh, that we have that trap on there when we have a negative air pressure drain pan, okay? Very, very important. Make sure that they're clear, but then also make sure that that trap has water in it, um, making sure that the trap is not undersized too because you can dry out a trap due to the, the air pressure. It'll actually pull the water out of a trap. So um, took care of that. Uh, I am going to talk to the customer about drain pans, but in all honesty, I can't see putting drain pans on those units because the economizers don't work. I think the heat exchangers might even be cracked too, which is a whole nother thing as we're coming into the fall. We're in the, you know, the beginning of September right now. So we'll be coming up. So, um, I, I actually no, we're the middle, I think we're the 13th of September. So anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent there. Um, so as I was finishing up on the drains, we had a thunderstorm coming up. And on top of that, I had another couple service calls that I needed to get to. So I got out of there. Um, really wasn't a fan of being up on the roof when the lightning was going off, especially with my 30 or 26 foot extension ladder or whatever sticking up in the air, you know, all that good stuff. So got off the roof and then I came back a couple days later. But as I was leaving, I noticed that the exhaust fans didn't have very much airflow being discharged out of them. So the first thing I did when I came back was we went ahead and checked all the belts. We found multiple 
um, loose and or cracked belts. So I replaced all the belts, got them all tightened up, got the exhaust fans running to the best of their ability. Also went through and checked all the AC belts too. I did change a couple AC belts too. Got those things all tightened back up. And then I um, went on to adjust the air balance, okay? With this particular restaurant, um, the they had an air balance company come out and they, a certified air balance company of all things come out and kind of re-engineer their building and shut down all the makeup air units and then slowed down the exhaust fans to low flow and then also um, basically adjusted all the pulleys on all the ACs. This was a long time ago and it just created a bunch of headaches and stuff, but I'm not in, I'm not wanting to really get too involved in re-engineering the building basically. So I just kind of work with what they have um, because those engineer guys are much smarter than me that re-engineered the building or the balance guys, I should have said, you know, so I just let them do their thing. So we work with what we have. I needed to get the outside air dampers on the ACs opened up to get rid of the negative air pressure problem in the building. Okay. With the negative air pressure problem, the exhaust fans were pulling out more air than we were putting back in. So therefore the doors were very difficult to open up. And then when they would open up the doors, they would get a blast of whatever it was outside right now it's hot air. And then it would make the humidity and the temperature in the building go up. Okay. So, um, I did a quick little air balance basically to where the building is slightly positive. We're not blowing doors open, but we're not sucking in that hot, unconditioned outside air in anymore. Okay. As I was leaving, I got to thinking about something and I went and confirmed my suspicions. I didn't even climb through the attic. Really? I just looked at the registers or diffusers and noticed that the ductwork was not connected to the diffusers properly. There's no cans on the top of them and they basically needed collars and everything. Okay. Um, I looked at three registers that I could get to, popped a couple tiles, and noticed that all three of them had problems. So at that point, I need to go and go back on another morning and go through the rest of the building and check the or the rest of the kitchen, I should say. It's like Pandora's box if you start inspecting all the ductwork. So I'll just worry about the kitchen, look for broken ducts, um, get a, a punch list basically of things that need to be fixed, and then I'll submit a quote to the customer. Things like this, you know, on a business side, um, I closed out the invoice when this video ended and I'm going to start another invoice and go back out just to assess the situations. Okay. Because I had already paused my invoice from the previous visit. I can't keep unpausing these invoices and just prolonging them longer and longer. Cause that just adds to the bill on the customer side for us. The way that it works is, is it's better to just go ahead and get our time billed out and then address the problems, you know, incrementally, um, just because sometimes things get forgotten, I get busy, and the next thing you know, I've got an invoice that I've had open for 90 days, which does happen quite often, actually, where it's like, oh yeah, I need to go back on that, so I'll pause it, you know, so anyways. Um, but I will go back and we'll give the customer a list of things. Once I fix all the ductwork issues, then I will have to go back and close down those outside air dampers and rebalance the building again. Then we'll get them back into hopefully operational um, the funny thing is, is, you know, basically it's like September 13th or something. By the time I get all this done, it's probably going to be a couple weeks and it's going to start getting cool again, but we're still going to have these same balance issues in the fall too, when it gets cold outside. So anyways, all right, guys, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Okay. It's really cool. It's very humbling. Any questions that you guys have, any comments, any feedback, good or bad, I'm open to it all. Tell me if I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Tell me if you like what I'm doing, whatever. Send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Leave a comment on any of the YouTube videos. Leave a comment on my Facebook page. Anyway, I try to answer as much as I can. I do acknowledge and I read every single comment on YouTube. You guys can see that because I heart and then like thumbs up them or whatever. But, um, you know, I try to answer as many as I can. Sometimes some slip through the cracks. If you guys, if I don't answer something that you put on there, don't, don't feel bad. Just put it on there again. Okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. If I see a double comment, that means that, Oh, I must've missed something or something like that. Okay. Um, I also do live streams Monday nights, uh, 5 PM Pacific time work permitting. And I usually answer a lot of questions on there too. Um, if I'm going to answer one of your questions for the most part, I try to go ahead and let you know. So I'll either comment with a link to the live stream on YouTube or on Facebook or through email. And I'll let you know, Hey, I'm going to answer this in the stream. And then, uh, if you guys want, you know, if you guys send me a question and you want me to, um, I try not to mention your guys' names unless you tell me that you want to, you know, you want me to mention your name. So just let me know in the comments. Hey, if you don't mind, if you can talk about this and just because you guys put a comment in there doesn't mean I'm going to talk about it on the stream. You know, I do have to kind of 
I get so many things that I can't cover everything. Okay. So I try to get to as much as I can, but anyways, I'm going off on a big time tangent. I really appreciate you guys watching these and we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay.